Hey guys, Jim with Jeffrey here. So today I want to talk about knee break and hip break for high bar squats, low bar squats, and even goblet squats. Or heel elevated goblet squats, sorry. So there is that common with myth that um, you don't want your knees to travel over your ankles in a squat. So say I'm um, squatting down and there's that myth that you, you want to cut off knee travel so that it stays in line or even behind your toes. And you don't want them in front of your toes. You don't want the knees to travel in front of the toes. But that's actually incorrect. So a lot of like how far your knees will travel over the toes will be uh, dependent on torso length. So how long your torso is, how long your um, knee, your quads are. So the longer your quads, obviously the more ankle dorsiflexion will be needed and the more um, range of travel that your knees will um, achieve, will require. But the main predominant factor that dictates how much knee break and hip break is needed or at the initial moment, like, um, to be initiate the movement, whether it's hip dominant or knee dominant, is really dependent on the type of squat you're doing. So, um, it, not necessarily type of squat, but how upright your torso would be, and that is correlate that correlates with the type of squat you're doing. So, for example, in a high bar squat, because your torso is sitting much more upright, because upright as as a result, you'll need more knee break, and the initial break will be with more knees of knees than hips, and there'll be greater knee travel. Now, in comparison, say at the low bar squat, when your torso sits less upright and, and more uh, horizontal, the initial break will be less, hip do less knee dominant, more simultaneous knee and hip dominant, and then um, travel knee and hip break travel going down during the movement will be more um, will be more equal. Now, the reason the reason that in the high bar squat your torso is more upright before you get into that is because of your center of gravity, the line of mass um, traveling through your body. Now, because like when we're squatting, people say, oh, stay over your midfoot, keep the bar of your midfoot because that's where you're most balanced over your center of mass because you know, high bar squat, you can imagine the barbell is right on my trap. So, so um, for it to stay over my center of gravity as I'm traveling down, I've got to sit very upright because that's where my center of gravity is. Now, and vice versa with a low bar squat, because the bar sits lower down on my back, as a result, it requires greater torso lean and uh, greater hip movement back in order to allow for my torso to come down. And as a result, because if you can imagine that the center of gravity from the bars here, to get it over my full center of gravity, the torso will need to um, sit less upright and more at an angle, more horizontal, in order for the bar to remain over that center of mass, if that makes sense. Now, and just to touch base, a couple of bases, so with a heel elevated goblet squat, like heel elevated squat, you can imagine that once my heels become elevated, my center of mass is pushed forward. So instead of going back like you would on a low bar squat, because it's pushed forward, you will need to sit more, even more upright with more greater knee travel in order to, uh, in order for that center of gravity to remain over that midfoot. Now, so I think I hope, um, hopefully that explains how much knee break and hip break is required um, during the movement, um, and that, that also correlates with to initiate the movement. So say, um, at the initial, when I talk about initial break, I refer to the, the moment of a squat where you're, you're in your starting position and you've got to do one thing to break at your, either your hips or your knees in order to um, allow movement to happen. Now, if you say like a, so now to wrap things up and bring everything together, say when you're in a high bar squat or a goblet squat, a heel elevated goblet squat, and you need your torso to be upright, um, as I mentioned earlier, greater knee travel will be required, and as such, the initial break movement will be greater knee, will be knee dominant, so it'll be, look like knees, then hips. Even if you go, how I teach it, even if um, you have to treat it as a two part movement, that's fine as well. So I'll, I'll perform the high bar squat for you guys here, just so, because um, I know I'm just wafting on, but visually, if you guys can see it, it will make a lot more sense. So say I'm doing, I'm in a high bar squat position. Now, in a high bar squat, like I mentioned earlier, because that bar is right over me, it's already over my midfoot, the tr my torso, as I'm going down into that squat, is gonna look very upright. So, and as such, the initial rate should be knee dominant. So, slow it down to really slow it down, break it in two parts for you guys. Part one, knee break, bam. Knee break there, and then knees will keep traveling and hips will also travel. I'll do that one time for you guys. So, knee break, and then as knees travel, even over, the, over my toes, like before, that's just a myth, hips will con continue to travel. And there you go. Now, if we go into a goblet squat, 
where our heels are elevated, you'll see, you can you guys can, I'm sure you guys can understand that because the center of gravity for where you imagine the weight on my back would be, it's shifted forward. As a result, I'm gonna have to this be much more upright in order to even bring back that center of uh, mass. And as a result, the initial movement will be much more knee dominated, mean knee dominant. And as we go through the movement, there'll be even further knee uh, movement. And this is a really great exercise because you know, it punishes you if say you lack ankle dorsiflexion mobility and it will teach you or show your coach that or it'll show yourself even that maybe you require heels in your normal squats because you have a lack for that ankle mobility. So if you imagine because my heel is elevated, part one to initiate the movement, much more knee dominant and there'll be a lot of knee travel forward and in order so you, for me to sit in that upright position because my heels have been elevated. And now you can see that even here my knees are much for are much uh, further ahead than my toes. And it's completely fine because my torso is in that correct position. Now, vice versa, um, if we take a step back and we go into low bar squats, then we just get into position for you guys. Because now, because the barbell sits lower down on my thoracic in that position, now torso lean will have to occur. Um, so my torso will fly fall forward a little, um, but now be very natural. Um, don't worry about that. Uh, in that that is required from the barbell to stay over that line of gravity, and as a result, in comparison to high bar squats, we can't be shooting our knees forward to initiate the movement and during the movement we can't be letting the knees travel because what happens is it will force us into attempting the center upright position, but then that will also shift our, our center of gravity of the barbell. So, the initial movement, how I teach it, knee break and hip break simultaneous. So um, even though um, yes it is more hip dominant. We don't want to initiate the movement purely with our hips because that will just put us into a good morning squat position and our whole torso collapse. Knee, knee break is also required. So I teach it a simultaneous knee and hip break. So palm movement, simultaneous break. And then as we travel down over mid foot, sim, um, same knee and hip break through the movement. So if there's an equal amount of knee and hip break in both directions, then that will allow our torso to fall naturally into that right position. Copy rack. Oh yeah, so but at the end of the day, like this, as I mentioned before earlier, a lot of this is dependent on your limb length. So core length, uh, femur length, uh, torso length. So, but those are just the general guidelines and principles. So um, the more, the more um, higher up the Bible sits, on your back or even in front of you because you imagine like in front so if this is the spectrum of my back lower down um for like a low bar score it would be more in a more collapsed uh, fallen torso length position but as you travel higher up to a high bar score you'll be have to sit more upright and even further when you go to the front of the body if like front score or a gob or a heel elevated goblet score that's continuing up the spectrum and you'll be more knee dominant over hips so that's just a that's just general guidelines for you to play around with, but end of the day, each their own and like find just play around, find the optimal uh, optimal uh, optimal amount of knee and hip break that's right for you. Uh, so that's all for me today. I'll catch you guys next time. Hope that was helpful for you guys.